Welcome, Sven. I want, I'm looking forward to having you on the show. Um, I can't wait to get this interview kicked off. With that said, let's go ahead and start off with the one word open. Go right ahead. Tell us that one word that you could uh, describe how you're feeling in this moment. Well, how I feel, I would go for SaaS in the end. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. All right. Take the next few minutes. Tell us about your business, how you got started, and how you, you know where you are at today and what your future looks like. So we started Sastrify uh, about 18 months ago uh, with the vision of making software purchasing and buying as easy as buying something on Amazon. That's pretty much uh, what we found in our previous company. We worked a lot with SaaS tools, obviously, as many of us do. Uh, and we always struggled with the whole process from what to buy, where to buy it, how much to pay for it. So that whole piece, but also keeping track of it over time. It's like, who's responsible, what do we actually have in the organization? So really building out that whole life cycle on one single platform. That's basically what we do with Sashrify. And that's um, yeah, what we, what we do for our clients. Awesome. Tell us about the pandemic. How did you pivot out of it? I know we all dealt with changes and all we had to do is pivot. You know, tell us what that looked like and how you kind of came out of it. Yeah, so for us, it was actually really special because in the end, it obviously accelerated uh, the whole topic of companies buying software all over the place. Um, for us, we left, like we had a different startup before, which we left uh, right in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, so basically we, we left, uh, I think it was February, yeah, end of February, 2020. Uh, so before the first lockdown um, and wanted to obviously do some traveling after that. <laughs> we sold our last business, that didn't work. So we stumbled directly into uh, what is now Sastrify. So actually it's been quite life-changing for us uh, that we weren't able to travel around, but we basically could focus really on yeah what our passion was and then how to build the next business um, and turns out like 18 months later uh, we're here like a couple more lockdowns pandemic still somewhat going on uh, but also a company with about 100 people around the world uh, so it's been been quite a quite an intense time that's that's cool thanks for giving us kind of um, a little roadmap on how you pivoted because all of us have had a pivot right so we totally get that. Tell us about a recent win. What is something that you're very proud of in Q1 that you put on the board, so to speak, that you want to share with us? Yeah, so we were, um, I mean, we we're, as you might be able to tell from Maxon, we're a European company, um, but uh, we, we actually got our first US-based customers on board um, in Q1. And I think that's um, obviously one of our big challenges is going over the Atlantic and also um, helping out with a couple of customers in Asia, a bunch of them in Europe, obviously, uh, but now we also see strong growth on the U.S. Uh, side, and that's really, really, yeah, that's really big win for us, and that's also one of our major targets for this year. Very cool. How about a not so win? What was something that happened in Q1 that you don't consider a win that you had to push through and come out on the other side? What did that look like? What, how did it happen? And what was your solution? Well, I think the the pretty obvious one is general market developments. Um, I think we we're quite fortunate. Um, like we've just raised around the funding in January. So we, we're going into this with a lot of um, dry powder and we can like very, very relaxed in a sense. Um, at the same time, obviously it makes you question all your plans and you basically everything that we were planning for this year, we now had to reevaluate, focus on, okay, what, like, what people do we really need to hire? How can we stretch our runways? And it was a lot of like additional work um, that was just induced and enforced onto us. Uh, by markets um, which we weren't planning with so i think that's obviously uh, one of the one of the bigger challenges over the last last couple of months awesome and let's shift over to thought leadership can you give me your point of view on what thought leadership is the very very broad definition um i think it's really first of all it's being passionate about the industry i think that's maybe the the first part for us so really not stopping of what's already out there, um, but really thinking ahead in terms of what might come, how might other factors, I mean, speaking of pandemic, how that whole topic influences uh, software as a service as an industry, even though it's a, a relatively broad one. Um, so I think that's that's one big part. Um, and then the, the second piece to that is probably also basically being open and uh, about it and really discussing it. So going out there, explaining your views, stating them, um, and also maybe taking the risk of somebody, some some other people seeing it differently. Um, I think that's pretty much where, where we see thought leadership and where, um, yeah, why it's such an important concept, especially once you're building a startup company. 
Awesome. Can you also share your point of view on company culture and what that looks like when it's running successfully? Yeah, so the interesting piece, again, on circling back on, on pandemic and how we had to shift. Uh, so Sashrify's first business that we've built completely distributed. Uh, so there's no company-owned offices. Um, that's not something we were really spiritual about, but it just made a lot of sense. Um, and by now, we've grown to, I think we have um, Sastronauts, as we call uh, our colleagues. Um, we have them right now from, I think, Kentucky to Lebanon and from Helsinki to Lagos in Nigeria. So that more or less half of the globe is already covered um, with, with regions and, and nationalities. Um, so I think a lot of that being requires us to be extremely transparent, extremely output focused, um, but also like bring together just like a tremendous amount of cultures um, and all of them like working towards the same goal. Um, and surprisingly, um, it works extremely well for us. So we just had our first ever all hands company offsite in Lisbon uh, last week. Um, so bring everybody together to meet for the first time um, was, was truly amazing. But at the same time, it also shows you that it's possible to build something um, from zero with people that have never uh, met each other before. So it was also a very cool one. Um, but I guess the, if it comes down to one or two words, it's uh, ownership and transparency that really form company culture. Beautiful. Tell me what problems would I be having as a company? Um, so if I'm dealing with this problem, you know, what does that look like day to day that would make sense for me to reach out to you for you to solve my problem? So that way people listening or I myself have a better understanding of, you know, hey, what's the typical problem you help and how do you help? Yeah, so maybe what's important to say, we typically work with organizations between 100 people and maybe five to 10,000 people. Um, if so, if you are in one of those organizations and you're struggling with your software contracts, like your Salesforce contract is up for renewal in two months, or somebody wants to buy that new shiny data software and you have no idea like what would be a good price to pay for that, that's exactly where we come into play. So basically helping you what to buy, where to buy it, what price to pay for it, really managing that whole procurement process. Um, or if you just want to do a cleanup, uh, especially now that people are more cost sensitive and you want to see where you're paying too much, get more like basically just an overview of what, what's out there in the organization already. Um, that's where we come into play. Awesome. Uh, and if people want to find out more information, can you give us your website address and your social handles that you prefer for people to follow you on? Yeah. So it's uh, sastrify.com. Um, I guess probably the easiest to, to view that in the show title or show notes. Um, or it's just like Sven at Sastrify.com, also pretty easy to reach out to. Um, and then on social, I guess it's fairly easy to find us on LinkedIn. Um, that's probably where we are most active. All right. Sign us off with a one word close. And I know you started with SAS and here we are at the close. What's this one word that you want to close with and tell us why? So I'd go with growth um, because that's um, even though markets are difficult, uh, that's our main focus for this year. Um, so we want to 5x the company and we're on a really, really good track to achieve that. Um, and that's pretty much why growth is, uh, yeah, the topic that keeps me awake at night at the moment. Awesome, Sven. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.